recap some things from uh, last week's game, some of the positive things. I thought uh, we threw the ball and caught the ball as well as what I can remember for many years. It was Andrew Peasley's best game. His numbers bear that out. He was on point. And, you know, the one throw that was intercepted, a receiver got tripped up. And so I thought he played his best game, and our receivers did an outstanding job. Uh, defensively, uh, we went into the game with the mentality to take the quarterback runaway. We felt like his athleticism would be such that uh, he could beat us with his legs, and I thought our defensive guys did a great job. We did come up with four sacks, um, so that's positive. In the kicking game, once again, John was outstanding with a 56-yard field goal, and I thought, uh, you know, as the game went along, I think Stewart uh, – punted the ball inside the 10 on that last drive, which was really important. Some of the things that I think we need to, to improve on, certainly I think we need to run the ball better uh, than what we did. It was not as effective. We need to be able to finish off a game uh, knowing the other team knows that we're going to run the football. And so that's going to be a great learning experience uh, for us and some outstanding things to see on the tape. Uh, on defense, we've got to get off the field on third down. Uh, you know, one play, I think one drive was 19 plays. And so some of that, uh, I think uh, they threw the ball and caught the ball better than what we thought they would. Um, and then also we've got to play better. I think there was too much space. We didn't, we didn't close in on the patterns well enough, and there were too many times we didn't have somebody there to cast, contest. It wasn't like there were uh, a lot of busted coverages, but it was more along the lines of, uh, they got their guys open and created space, and the quarterback threw the ball better than I can ever remember him, but that was to be expected. Um, <clears throat> so nonetheless, uh, uh, a good game to win, a game that I was personally concerned about. I know some of the other people were not, but I certainly was, and I think whenever you play uh, some FCS teams, uh, you know, you're going to get their best shot, and we certainly did. And uh, we came up with a win. Um, it would have been a little bit more beneficial to get some of our guys off the field. Uh, we were able to get Andrew off the field, but some of our other guys. But nonetheless, a good win, and we're going to move forward to play in Texas. Uh, you know what? I've had a chance to look at the University of Texas for 35 years and uh, sometime coaching against them, uh, a lot of years coaching against them. Uh, this is the best Texas football team I've seen. Uh, I think they're as good as what's been advertised. I know a lot of the national writers had had really think great things to say about them. Uh, I think Coach Sarkeesian's done a great job uh, meshing in with the fabric of the University of Texas. It's a unique place. I have a lot of dear friends who have coached there, uh, and Oscar Giles had played there. And I think he's done a great job with this program. They are hitting on all cylinders. Um, you know, yours is a real deal. I mean, he's as good as advertised, advertising or advertised. Um, great receivers, uh, people that can stretch the field, tight ends. They take a lot of shots, and they're not long foul balls. They hit a lot of home runs. Over on defense, I think their defensive front is very disruptive. They run well. Uh, they're back seven. Uh, guys tackle well. They've got great speed. They matched up with Bama and ran step for step with them. And I think we all know what kind of team that they have to go into Tuscaloosa and win the way they did. And so uh, really impressive team. And uh, I think they deserve to be in the uh, conversation of uh, the national championship. Uh, we'll get their best shot, I, I'm sure. And we're going to give them our best shot. And so uh, excited about the game, a lot of work ahead, uh, got to move forward as a football program, and uh, this will be a, a great opportunity to do this. So questions? Yes? Craig, obviously their offense looked great on TV against Alabama. After watching the film, defensively, where do you start with those guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been scratching our heads with that. I mean, uh, you know, because they have so many weapons, Ryan, and um, – you know, we've got to be able to take the quarterback out of his comfort zone uh, to try to put some pressure on him. Like I said, they take great shots, and they have receivers that can, can stretch the field, and, you know, they have a capable running game. Uh, you know, the offensive line does a, a great uh, job in protection, but we've got, to, we've got to get Ewers, get him off his spot, 
and make him have to go to some place he doesn't want to go. Daunting task, though. So. Greg, I know this is a big challenge for your offensive line, and I'm sure you're going to challenge them this week if you already have it. Uh, number, he's number 15 in the country. Rusty, seven sacks. I mean, yeah. tons of tackles for loss. How, big, how important is it for this offensive line to really show up? Well, they need to, um, and it's going to be a challenge because th their front is – uh, big. I mean, they got one guy that's 343 pounds, and he moves well now. And last year, he didn't move so well. They've improved. Uh, they're explosive. Uh, they're disruptive. Uh, and we need to make sure that we can establish some a semblance of a running game and protect the quarterback. Greg, what's been uh, your evaluation to the first two games of uh, Rick Brown so far? Um, thought he played better against Texas Tech as opposed to what he did against Portland. I talked to him this morning. He had, he had a nicked up ankle that we were concerned about. Uh, he's tough as boot leather. Um, you know, he went out and competed, but I think coming in and out of his breaks uh, at times, he was just a little bit of half step off, half step off, and um, and I thought uh, Portland took advantage of that. And so he'll need to play better. I know this is a big game for him, as for all our players. But you know, he's from Central Texas and. So a chance to go back home and play. Um, and so I thought he played really well against Tech, and he'll need to have that kind of performance. Do you like the fact that you have that Tech game under your belt and, you know, this isn't like you played mm -hmm. Portland State and then you're playing Texas? You guys have played at, at a high level this year. Yeah, we certainly have. But I, uh, um, it'll be interesting to see how the Big 12 shakes out. Um, this team we're playing is uh, – they're different animals. I mean, they they are. Um, I would say they they rank in the same realm of the year when we were here and we played Oregon and they were in the national championship game. I, they've got weapons everywhere. They're big, strong, and they run well. Um, it's going to be a real test and how they would match up against Texas Tech. I don't know now. Texas Tech played pretty well against Oregon, and so um, you know that's why we play the game and we're excited about it. Greg, I know schedules are made way in advance, mm -hmm. but. Here's what uh, Tom and I did after the games that were scheduled in advance. Uh, we sat down and we said we need to have a strategic plan when we go out of conference. And so if we're playing a, a game like this, uh, one of the things that the first thing we need to be able to do is say, okay, um, do I have the, the confidence to be able to walk in a pregame meal and say, guys, if we play well, we got a chance to win. Uh, we cannot take a football team and, and say, okay, we got no chance. We're just going out and playing a game for, say, like a guarantee, which this is a guarantee game. So that's the first thing. The next thing is, is uh, does it fit in our geographical footprint for recruiting? You know, a couple of years ago, we were scheduled to play Clemson, and to me, that made no sense. And uh, we ended up playing UConn, which, okay. Um, However, that was a pretty close game. Uh, and then the last thing is is the financial component. If you're going to take a game out of here and play a guarantee game, which means you're not going to have an opportunity to go home and home, which how we got Texas Tech here or Missouri here, uh, there needs to be a pretty significant uh, financial uh, component for the athletic department. And as a head football coach, I recognize bills need to be paid. Uh, this is part of the, the nature of college football. But looking through the, that, that criteria, that prism, and so uh, Texas checked off all the boxes. They had come to us, and, um, and we're excited about playing the ball game. Greg, I know you said uh, Harrison's kind of mm -hmm. will, his role will kind of depend on practice this week. How do you kind of expect the running back situation to, to work out? Yesterday? Yeah. Well, we're going to practice him today, and he practiced some last week. It was limited. But he will practice today. He'll practice all week long. Uh, we anticipate that he'll be uh, full speed. And then we'll determine, uh, you know, where he's going to sit on the depth chart by how practice is going, by how he's moving. But I would anticipate him playing a pretty significant role in this game. How do you prepare a team <laughs> to play in humidity and play in front of mm -hmm. this team that can fit everybody from Cheyenne? Yeah. Well, what, what we have found, uh, Cody, is typically once the game starts outside the noise, you know, the games are the game, whether there's 100,000 or, you know, there's 
15,000. Uh, the noise does come into play, and so we're going to work hard on crowd noise this week. That's going to be important. Uh, you know, we have a RD and a medical staff where we can work on changing our diet during the course of this week to make sure that we stay hydrated, and uh, that does come into play. Cramping comes into play, and they've done a good job with that. Uh, and then one of the roles I have as a head football coach is, you know, once the game starts is, uh, you know what, it's uh, man against man and go out and play. Um, I do think that there's there's benefits of of playing against a really good opponent. I know I listened to Coach Saban's press conference. He talked about being tested. Uh, they were tested. We will get tested, and that gives you another barometer where we're at as a football team. Do you like the fact that a lot of your guys – Mm -hmm. Well, that you know, there's give and take with that, Ryan. Uh, you know, some of the guys uh, maybe have dreamt about playing for Texas, and other guys that never even crossed their mind because they didn't feel like they could get in that realm. And so, trying to convince some of the guys, hey, you belong on this field, and then other guys maybe to calm them down. That um, we've got, like I said, a mature football team. We've got a lot of players from Texas, and uh, this will be a big opportunity for them. He's taking some hits. He's feeling pretty good. Uh, I think you'll have a chance to talk with him today. Uh, but like I said, that was his best game, guys. I, I, I look at it as decisions, and uh, he was mobile. He threw the ball. He was on point. He read coverage as well. He did not put the ball in harm's way. Um, played really well, and it was good to see because – you know, the things we're trying to do is one of the things is improving the passing game. And I think he, I don't know, threw the ball for close to 70%. And, you know, we had a lot of big plays. And, and, and I can't say the interception was on him simply because it was a time when out the ball was in the air. And so it was good to see him play well. Did you talk to Kate Anderson at all about Quinn Ewers? Uh, earlier, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, he backed him up. And so he knows him well. Obviously, there's a couple years that have changed. And... Uh, but like I said, he's the, uh, um, he's a real deal. I mean, he's as good as advertised. Craig, have you, now that you've had some time to go back on the Portland State game, mm -hmm. uh, how impressed have you been with Ayer's ability mm -hmm. to open up? He, had, he almost had a touchdown against Texas. Sure. You know, well, we saw it during fall camp. You know, he, he was not here to be during uh, spring ball, but, you know, we saw uh, flashes during fall camp, and, you know, he still needed to learn some alignments and some of the reads, but – He's progressed and have a couple of the plays that he had there. Is, is, he's got really good speed, and, and he's a playmaker, and he's very fluid, and he comes in and out of his breaks well. Probably obvious, but they're a plus five in turnover margin right mm -hmm. now. That can really be a big swing in this one, too. Mm -hmm. It's huge, you know. And, you know, if you just look at everything, Cody, on paper, you know, for us to have an opportunity to win, I think we're going to need to flip that around and be like plus three in the game. Sometimes I say plus two, uh, you know, I'm picking a number out of the year, but it's, there's probably some merit to it. Go plus three because you're on the road against uh, – I think they're – like I said, they deserve to be in the conversation for the, one of the top teams in the country. They went into Bama and, and beat them, and they have players, and they're well coached. And so, you know, we're going to need to – be playing at our best, and they're going to need to be off a little bit. But as you guys know, that's why we play the game. What do you think Oscar's emotions are going to be like? Going you know, it's all different. You know, I've talked to him. He told me a little while ago, by the time the game gets going, my guys are going to be eating red meat. Uh, you know, what's what's interesting for Oscar is, I mean, he's a, he, it's not like he just coached there. Uh, he played there. And as a result, when you're a player there, uh, and then coach there, coach for Mac, was a GA with Tom Herman, coach with Tom Herman. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit different. It's kind of like when I went back to Nebraska, the only difference is Oscar enjoyed a great career. I enjoyed – I was one of the guys, Coach Osborne, kind of said, oh, Craig, well, how you doing? Uh, that was a little bit different. But, yeah, I think it's different for him. Uh, but, you know, he's an ultimate, uh, ultra, ultimate professional, uh, but he will get our guys ready to play. And they'll need to play well. And I think we've got, you know what, I think our inside guys are pretty good players. Do you know how many times you've beaten Texas in your coaching career? No. Do you want to know? 
Well, I got a couple I can think of. I don't know how we came up with one. Big 12 title game in St. Louis. No, we lost that. 22-6 or 99? Was it? And then Rice, the close calls at Rice. Yeah, close calls were two-point deals. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I just know we played them in the Big 12 championship game because we played them during the season in uh, – I, don't, I think Major was their quarterback, and they were shooting off their mouth that it's not science and everything else, and we went down there. But, yeah, Mac Brown is a dear friend of mine. I mean, I uh, have great respect. I don't like Texas. Uh, I don't, but, uh, you know, a great program, and they are playing at a really high level. And like I said, Coach Sark has been a really good tire for them, and uh, they put together a, a really good coaching staff, and they're playing – they're playing at a really high level, guys.